Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're gonna check out the Rode Wireless Go. Now there's two very important things that I wanna take care of before we jump into this review of this very interesting new device from Rode. Number one, this video was not sponsored. Nobody sent these to me. I went out and pre-ordered like the rest of you, uh, or at least some of you, to check this thing out on my own. So zero biases here. Also, the second thing I wanna mention, and probably something that's somewhat uh, obvious, and maybe the elephant in the room, is that I recently did a video essentially saying I'm not using road gear anymore, and I explained why in that video. I would highly recommend you check that video out. A lot of people took that as I'll never ever touch a road device or product again. In that video, I was mainly talking about the gear that they currently had and why I wasn't really into it. And I'm still standing by that video 100%. I'm still not using the Rode VideoMic Pro. I much prefer my DD D3 Pro and my Asden microphones over the offerings from Rode. So when it comes to this video, we're looking at something very interesting and kind of the opposite of what I talked about in that video, a brand new product that is better than some of the other options. And this guy comes in at $200 as a wireless system with a built-in microphone on the transmitter, and this thing is tiny. So, what's the scoop with this device, and is it any good? Another thing to note is that this whole video right now is being recorded with this, the Sennheiser XWSD kit. So, here's the transmitter. Sorry about the potential noise I just made there. And then I have the receiver on top of my GH5S. This whole video will be recorded with this setup, which is kind of what this is aimed at uh, when it comes to that smaller market. So this is a very affordable kit. It was really affordable when it came out, but the road system is even more affordable at $200 versus around $300, $350 for one of these kits. So let's go ahead and talk about the road kit, what you get in the box and how it works. In short, it's very simple. You have a transmitter and a receiver. Both are exactly the same when it comes to the dimensions. Both are charged via USB-C, have an internal battery life giving you seven hours of runtime, which is really impressive. And both have a power button that can be held down to turn them on and off. On the transmitter, there are two blue LED lights signifying power and link to the receiver. A built-in microphone, which is pretty interesting, and a 3.5 millimeter non-locking input for plugging in other microphones. The power button on the transmitter can also be used as a relinking or pairing button if you're going to be mixing and matching different sets of these, although they come out of the box pre-paired, which is pretty handy. On the transmitter, there's also a little belt clip or shirt clip in this case, since it has a microphone. So you could clip it to a piece of clothing and just use this little unit as your entire transmitter and microphone without using an external microphone, or you could get a lavalier and plug it in and use it like a traditional body pack. Although it's so small, you could hide this just about anywhere, which is pretty great. On the receiver, we have a great little display giving you audio levels, your battery for both the transmitter and receiver, your connection link status, which is really handy, and of course, a little tiny scale letting you know where you're at with your dB levels, because this unit also lets you control your DB output. So we'll talk about that here in a second. Next to the USB charging jack, there's also an output using 3.5 millimeter non-locking to connect to your camera or other audio device. And then on the bottom, there is a pairing button as well as the DB button, which will allow you to select one of three different levels. So full Monty all the way turned up is Unity or zero DB. And then there is a medium to low setting, which is going to give you a lot of flexibility to be able to fine tune the output of this device to your camera. And this is really handy to have on a device like this because my Sennheiser kit doesn't have it. And as you might hear in this video, we're actually probably going to peak at some point or clip with our audio because this microphone system is very hot, but there's no way to turn it down without external gear. So my GH5S is turned all the way down, but there's a good chance we're gonna clip, which is gonna be pretty unfortunate when it happens. Going back to the display on this receiver for a second, it is very accurate and very responsive, very bright and actually really high resolution. So it's a real joy to monitor audio with this thing and it has different colors for different audio levels. So you can pretty easily see when you're about to clip or when you have clipped 
just by looking at the display. Just like on the transmitter, the receiver also has a little clip for your belt pocket or shirt. But what's really slick is this is also a cold shoe adapter essentially. So you can take this whole thing and just slide it right under the top of the camera. It's a really strong connection. This is a huge step up from my Sennheiser XWS kit, which requires some different adapters and things to use as a belt clip and to use on a camera. Also in the box with this unit, you get a couple of their accessories, including a 3.5 to 3.5 cable for connecting your receiver to your microphone, two USB-C cables for charging both of the units separately, and then two kind of dead cat feet or something really small uh, that you can attach to the top of the transmitter for when things get a little noisy and windy outdoors. Now I will say that this is pretty poorly designed in my opinion. Uh, it's very difficult to get clipped on and even when it's clipped on it knocks off of the transmitter very easily. So you might want to find another solution. I was really pulling my hair out trying to get that thing to work but it's really nice that they at least included it. And finally there's a little bag to keep everything nice and organized. So let's go ahead and put these things to work and see what we think. So I'm gonna run through a series of tests comparing this wireless system to my XWS. We're actually gonna use this microphone that comes with the XWS on both systems. So we can see with the same microphone, what does it sound like? We'll see what the built-in microphone sounds like. And then we'll connect some shotgun microphones to these and see how that works for transmitting a wireless shotgun signal to your camera. Right now you're listening to the Sennheiser XWS with the included microphone. My name's Caleb Pike. This is an audio test. This is an audio test. Testing one, two, three. Right now you're listening to the Rode Wireless Go, but I'm using the included microphone that comes with the Sennheiser, so we're gonna see what they sound like with the same microphone attached. This again is the Rode Wireless Go with an external lavalier. My name's Caleb Pike, this is an audio test, and you're listening to this audio test. Right now you're listening to the Rode Wireless Go clipped to my t-shirt, nothing else attached. This is a test, my name's Caleb Pike, and you're listening to an audio test. Right now you're listening to the Rode Video Micro attached to the Rode Wireless Go. Little bit of interference, especially if I let go of the transmitter. At any rate, this is the Rode Wireless Go with a Rode Video Micro attached. And now you're listening to the Sennheiser XWS plugged into a Rode Video Micro just out of frame. So now we have a wireless boom set up and it doesn't seem to be as bad as the Rode wireless when it comes to interference. In one last setup, just to see if it would help with the interference and it seems to be working. So this current setup is the amazing Deity D3 Pro and I'm plugged directly into the wireless transmitter. You can see it right here, the wireless go. I should probably drop down the receiver level. All right, that's much better. And I don't seem to be hearing much. If I really mess with things and move the transmitter closer to the microphone, I seem to be running into issues. But so far, this setup is pretty clean. And you can see I have it mounted directly to this Rycote handle here. So this is a pretty nice little setup. I can go ahead and boom the microphone a little further up. And if it's too quiet for my levels, I can simply grab the knob on the back of this microphone, turn it up, put it back in that higher position, maybe something like that would work pretty well for a boom microphone setup. So that's pretty clean and I'm pretty excited about setups like this. Tiny little wireless transmitter, really nice microphone and you're off to the races. So what do I think of this system? Well, after listening to the test, I noticed a couple things. First and foremost, uh, from at least my experience, I really am not a huge fan of the sound quality coming from this built-in microphone on the transmitter. To me, that's not a con at all. I think it's a bonus that they even included this. It's really convenient and it'll get the job done for some people in some scenarios. And you can always add an external microphone. When using the same Sennheiser microphone on each device, they sounded very, very similar. So I don't think there's one better over the other. Although I feel like I noticed that the road was a little quieter when it comes to the noise floor. I have kids upstairs, so I really can't do a clean noise floor test, at least in this video, maybe in a future one. But I think the Rode is doing a little better when it comes to that 3.5 millimeter lav setup than the Sennheiser. I was kind of disappointed that uh, this thing seems to have more RF issues than my Sennheiser kit. Using the Rode Video Micro is definitely a problem. Uh, that could be just RF shielding on both devices are pretty poor. 
So something to consider, it may not work with every single microphone out there, uh, but it did, oddly enough, do great with the DD D3 Pro. So maybe it just likes having a microphone signal that's coming from a microphone that is powered by a battery instead of this unit powering a microphone. So that might be the problem. Maybe I'm just misusing it, but I thought I'd at least try it. The Sennheiser did much better with different microphones plugged into it. Uh, but overall, I mean, I just got to come out and say it. This thing is significantly better value than the Sennheiser. I really do hate to say it because I love those Sennheisers and I just now wish they had a little OLED display. Uh, another button maybe to be able to adjust your output level would be amazing. The nice thing about the Sennheiser kit is you can buy other accessories and pair them to each other and they have different options. So if you don't want 3.5 millimeter, you can get XLR male or female. Uh, they also have locking connections. So that makes me feel a little better knowing that you know, something isn't going to accidentally disconnect. But for $200, you're just not gonna beat this little system. And by little, I mean, come on guys, this is absolutely ridiculous how small both of these transmitter and receiver are. I also did a signal torture test with the Rode and with the Sennheiser doing the exact same pattern through the studio. And both seem to do just fine with exception to the Sennheiser having one spot where I got kind of that sound. Uh, but it only happened once and it's very brief. So both are probably very comparable. There are some differences in you know range of these, but they're good enough for most of our uses. So I really wouldn't consider that you know one better over the other. So at the end of the day, the brand new Rode Wireless Go system is amazing. I'm probably, I hate to say it, but I think I'm gonna end up selling at least some of my Sennheiser XWS kits or units rather, uh, and picking up another set of these. You know, I bought this one and I think I want another one. It's just so easy. And I love gear that just gets out of the way and just works. When you pull these out of the box and turn them on, you're done. You can use them just as you see here, or you can customize them with your own microphones, but they just work. And I love when gear does that. If you enjoyed this video and want to pick one of these up, I'll have affiliate links in the description below, as well as some links to some other microphones and things I used in this video. If you're happy with all your audio gear, maybe you uh, wanna pick up something over at the Video Shooters Academy to learn more about your camera or filmmaking in general. At any rate, that's gonna wrap it up for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.